Hi YouTube, it's Lena, and I'm here today with a review on Thor the Dark World. You know, like everybody else on the internet. Just a second. Turning my TV down a bit while I have the Green Lantern playing in the background, which I actually like the Green Lantern, but I guess that's just me. Anyways, sorry, Mo is poking his head in. If you see something black pop up, that's him. Anyways, I really loved it. It had its faults, but Thor The Dark World, I really, really enjoyed. Now, I'm not going to describe too much of the plot, like, as a summary, but there will be spoilers in here because you can't talk about what you liked and what you didn't like without talking too much about spoilers. So, spoiler alert, if you haven't seen it yet and you don't want spoilers, click out now. It's been a week, though, so most people that I think wanted to see it right away have probably seen it. I actually went the day before it pre it premiered because my theater was doing a Thor's Day where I got to see Thor, the Avengers, and Thor the Dark World all in one sitting. So I was there for like eight hours. <laughs> it was really fun though and I actually won the display, that the Thor the Dark World display in a trivia contest. So now I have a seven foot tall Loki in my bedroom. <laughs> It's so geeky, but it's, I love it. I, I have to put it up on my wall and just have to find somewhere that can fit a seven foot tall Loki. Anyways, the pros of the movie. The pros of the movie. Um, most of the actors were actually really good in their roles. Chris Hemsworth, you, Thor is not the most interesting of characters just because he's so good he, like he's so no, I can't call him naive in this movie anymore but he used to be so naive about everybody around him but for what he's given to work with Chris Hemsworth is very good with it Tom Hiddleston obviously once again stole the show as Loki I mean he was fantastic, even though he was probably only in about a third of the movie. And that was even when they, like, went back and added a few scenes. My, probably one of my favorite comedic scenes was where Loki started transforming into different people, including, spoiler, spoiler, Steve from, Steve Rogers, uh, Captain America from the Avengers. To so just kind of sit there and annoy, annoy Thor until he bitched at him, basically. That was hilarious. I wish I could quote it, but I'm gonna I'd butcher it if I tried, so I'm not gonna. Kat Dennings was actually really hilarious as Darcy. She also stole the show of most of the scenes that she was in. They they had her in there a lot. Like she was act Kat Darcy was in the movie more than Sif and the Warriors Three, which you know, if you like that it's okay. If you don't that's fine too. I liked it. And Zachary Levi, I think is how you say his name. I hope I'm saying that right. I think he actually did a better job of Fandral than the person who played him before, whose name I can't even remember at the moment. But with what little he was on screen, I think he did a very good job. Anyways. I think at least the idea of the story was really good. I don't think it was necessarily performed the best in execution. I liked them not having Loki as the straight up villain this time because he's already been the villain in two movies. It's It was time for them to do something a little different and I think they did that really well. And I for one liked the ending. I know some people probably had their issues with it or didn't really understand it. But what Big spoiler, uh, once again. Thor goes and talks to Odin and says, I don't want to be king. I don't need to be king while you're still around. So. And then, after Thor leaves, he transforms into Loki. Showing that he's been masquerading as Odin. We don't know what happened to Odin. We probably will not know what happened to Odin until the next Thor movie. 
unless it somehow comes up in Avengers 2, which Tom Hiddleston's not supposed to be in Avengers 2, but they might just have Anthony Hopkins make an appearance. We don't know. Now, the not so good. Natalie Portman obviously did not want to be in this movie. <laughs> For most of it, Jane was infected and passed out or couldn't do anything, and it was just dull. She was dull. And I've had people tell me she's a wonderful actress and stuff she actually wants to be in, but my only examples of her are in, well, Thor, Thor 2, and what little clips that I've seen of the Star Wars prequels, and she's awful in all of them. So either she needs to just give up, and find stuff that she really wants to do, or she just needs to give up, because I have yet to be impressed by her. And she's like this big around, and I'm always worried that every time Thor hugs her, he's gonna crush her. The villains, like the actual villains, Malekith and the Dark Elves, they had so little screen time that they just looked like they were being evil to be evil. Now, I understand it that there was... Probably upwards of 45 minutes to an hour of footage cut from the movie to make it run under two hours. I don't know why they felt they needed it to run under two hours, but apparently they did. By they, I mean, you know, producers, studio heads, whomever is actually in charge of that, not the director. And that was the thing that was missing the most, was any, any reason for the Dark Elves to be there. And you have... Christopher Eccleston, who not only played the Ninth Doctor wonderfully on Doctor Who, but also showed that he could do a great bad guy that you understand his reasoning, even though you're like, you are so evil, you need to die. He did that 28 days later. They kind of wasted Christopher Eccleston under a lot of prosthetic makeup and not enough scenes. Now, I heard that, basically, Odin's father, Bor, practically committed war crimes on the Dark Elves, including killing Malekith's wife and family, which made him go bonkers, or banana balls, if you'd, if you'd like. So, I wish they'd have left... If I wish they'd have left some more of the Dark Elves in the movie. We could have had a two hour and fifteen minute movie and we'd ev the audience would have been fine. And that's been the big complaint among everybody who's reviewed the movie so far is the Dark Elves and Malekith seem to have like no reason for wanting to bring the universe back into darkness other than because they can. We're Dark Elves. We should want darkness. That's not a good reason. Y'all needed to fix that. It's like, now a lot of people I know are looking forward to the DVD coming out just so we can watch the deleted scenes and actually understand what the hell was going on with the Dark Elves. That was a big complaint. And overall, the movie just, because it was cut down so much, it just felt a little rushed. I mean, we nobody was complaining that the Avengers ran too long. Nobody was. So, why did you feel the need to have to cut so much out of Thor? And finally, my biggest complaint... Well, actually, my biggest complaint was the Dark Elves, but a big complaint of mine that I had was the rather superfluous character of Ian. He is Darcy's intern. Darcy refers to him as intern for about half of the movie that she's in. And then suddenly she's macking on him, like... I love Darcy. Darcy didn't need a love interest in this movie. Well, lots of people root for Darcy and Loki to get together, but that's neither here nor there. Darcy did not need a new character of a love interest in this story. Plus, the boy was an idiot. He, the boy threw his car keys into the little portal where stuff disappears into. How do you function? I know that the idea of putting in a character like that, it was the reason why Darcy was in it in the first one, is you have somebody who's not super scientific, 
that you can kind of experience the movie through. Well, Dar Darcy was in the second one. We didn't really need a new person to experience it through again. We could just still experience it through Darcy. I, I, I didn't get the reasoning for having the character of Ian in there at all, much less wind up being a last-minute tacked-on love interest of what is essentially a sidekick character. Even though I absolutely adore her, that's kind of what she's written as. But anyways, my in summary, I really liked this movie. I'm probably going to wind up seeing it again before it comes out of theaters, but... There was some stuff that definitely needed to be fixed. I do think it was better than Iron Man 3. Because Iron Man 3 had some serious problems. But Marvel, you still need to step up your game a little bit. So, I'll see you later, YouTube. Bye!